today where I talk to you guys about my poetry. Um, but I am only going to be sharing with you one poem of mine, and that's because I have something else that I want to talk about first. So, um, in this book, I mentioned a lot of poems that I've written that have been done for something called National Poetry Writing Month, or NAPORIMO, um, for those of you who are familiar with NaNoWriMo, or National Novel Writing Month, it's similar. It's a month of writing, but poetry, and it's in the month of April, so since that's going to be starting in a few days, I wanted to talk to you guys about that, um, because I am definitely going to be doing it this year. Um, and I have been doing it for the past, like, I want to say five years. It'll be fun. I think five years, yeah. Um, five or more. Anyway, um, so I have been doing it for a while now. Um, every year you write a poem every day. And this is something that I highly, um, believe is important from a writer's standpoint and also I find it to be very therapeutic, where, you know, you are forcing yourself to sort of sit down and, especially in the way that I personally write, um, very confessional style poetry, I guess, it becomes a sort of spilling of your guts, and so I always feel like, for the entire month of April, I just feel so much lighter, because Every day I am spilling out any, like, tension I have, or any emotional turmoil gets written out into this poem. And even if it's something that I can't actually talk to anyone about, I can write about it, and I also always post it in some public sphere. Um, this will, of course, just be among my friends, but, um, this year I will tried to post at least a few of them on my Facebook like page, which, as usual, is linked below. Um, so if you guys are interested in reading some of my poems, I don't think I will post all of them, just because they don't always end up all that great, and that's another thing about this. Uh, committing yourself to forcing yourself to write means that not everything is going to be amazing. So, um, like, Flipping through the poems in this, while yes, a lot of my best works have come from this, just because it's like the whole spilling of something from the gut and writing about it as you're feeling it, um, causes a lot of raw emotion, um, but at the same time only like a couple, maybe th I've seen like three or four at most poems out of an entire month, and that's five out of like 30 poems um, at most have been put into this book. So, and I mean this is this much poetry since um, 07 I want to say, yeah 07, so obviously not everything that you're going to write is going to be perfect and amazing and something that you want to share with the world, world share with the world. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot how to talk. Um, but even though not everything will be amazing, there will be amazing stuff. And it will help you grow as a writer, it will help you learn more about yourself, it will be cathartic to those of you who deal with emotional turmoil and stuff like this. Um, even if you don't consider yourself a poet, I highly, uh, highly endorse the idea of regularly sitting down and writing whatever comes to your mind or heart. So, there we go. And I have one poem which, even though it didn't come from National Poetry Writing Month, it did come from this sort of process where I had a lot on my mind and I just sat and I spilled my guts out onto the page and this is sort of what happened. So, I've also taken to using this. I mean, I've used the ribbon as a bookmark 
but just sort of tying it around so I have this neat little visualization of this is how much poetry I've written. So I need to remove this little This was written last fall. Um, like I said, it was a very sort of, I had stuff on my mind. Um, I was thinking about, I guess, myself and how I um, act in certain social interactions. You guys will get an idea of what I'm talking about after I actually read you the poem, but it's called Burning Bridges. I don't take pleasure from burning bridges, but let's be real, ours was starting to fall apart. Not solid enough to step on, you groaned with every step, creaking so I knew I didn't belong. There is no room here for anyone not willing to build you up so you can take them down. I don't take pleasure from burning bridges, but you look so beautiful in your blaze of glory, like a demon fortress. Finally, you knew what you really were. A flame for moths. Just don't get too close. I don't take pleasure from burning bridges. But hey, I needed the firewood. So, yeah, that was a pretty um, short one, but basically talking about how I and not the kind of person who will, as the poem says, burn bridges. Um, I, I think the most obvious example of this is like on Facebook. I'm the kind of person who um, will never really go through and like I've had friends who have said, oh, I'm going through, I'm going on a deleting spree and deleting people I don't talk to anymore. I've never done that. Um, and the reason why is I've, I've had a Facebook account since I was in high school and I remember once in um, I want to say my freshman year of college I got um, an anonymous message and back then Facebook had all these little side apps and one of them was that you could send messages anonymously essentially and um, someone had sent me an anonymous message saying hey I know we were never super close, and um, I wish I'd, you know, sort of like, I wish I'd gotten to know you better when we were in high school because you're really cool and I really like seeing the things that you post. And I'd gotten a handful of messages like these. Some of them were from people who just said, yeah, we never really talked, and others who outright admitted that they and or their friends had bullied me. Um, so and like this was a thing that I had faced when I was in high school so I have always sort of been a forgiving person like that um, and I yeah just never been the kind of person to say hey I don't need you therefore I'm getting rid of you I've always wanted to be the kind of person who like anyone feels like they can come to and this means that I do stay on good terms with people who have hurt me, but if you have hurt someone close to me and with malicious intent, that is a no-no. And so that is sort of what this um, poem talked about a little bit was someone who had really badly hurt a friend of mine and again, maliciously, not like on accident or anything. This person was, I guess, deeply troubled in a way that they only felt like they could have power by hurting other people. And I just didn't want that in my life. Um, and so, you know, our bridge was starting to fall apart. Um, 
creaking so I knew I didn't belong, was making even me feel bad about myself with our interactions, um, stuff like that, so, you know, sometimes as much as it might hurt, sometimes it's just what you need to do. So, yes. Um, let's see. Let me go back to this so I can try and bind this again. This is kind of hard to slip it back on. <laughs> with the way that I've slipped it off because I didn't I didn't untie it. <laughs> tried. Oh come on. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And it's all twisted. Oh well. There we go. I really like this. When I came up with this idea of how to bookmark books, I might use this on other books now. So far I've only used it on this one because this book is special. Especially, you know, if you have, like, midterms and stuff, and if you're in school, yikes. So around midterms, there are so many times when I would just, like, end up having to, you know, spend the whole day writing a paper, and then you not feel like writing a poem after spending the whole day writing a paper, so then just write two poems the next day or whatever. Um, or if I know I'm not going to be able to spend a day writing a poem, I write it, like, an extra poem the day before or something like that. so very 